the, the measure of faith. Amen. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. We'll read the whole chapter here in a bit, but let's go ahead and pray. God, we come into your presence, Lord. Just thank you so much for this night, Lord. Just thank you for the singing. Just for so many people do so many different things around here. Taking care of the property, singing, just watching the doors, we sure so many things. If I try to list them all, I'll forget them. But I thank you so much for each person in here just being here, being faithful, and serving you, just here to worship you. Thank you for that. Thank you that you call each of us to serve you, not just one or two of us. I appreciate that. Thank you for saving us, Lord. One here isn't saved. They've never accepted you as their Savior, never made you their Savior. We pray, as Brother Ed said, that they come forward tonight. As Brother Larry, I believe, said, they come forward tonight and be saved. I just don't pray you work tonight, each and every heart, let us draw closer to you. We surrender to you so we can be used. And once that aren't saved, we pray you save them. Please guide a message, Lord, that it be your words and not mine. Just um, use me as we see fit. Now teach each and every heart, teach my heart tonight. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So Romans chapter 12, one of my favorite chapters ever. There's just so many really good sets of verses in here. But the first one is one that we hear a lot. And I want to talk about the usability of the brethren, the usability of I'm kind of proud. I mean, each of my points start with the letter U. That doesn't matter, but that was impressive, just the letter U. Anyways, the usability of the brethren. So how are we to serve God to be usable? Is there a qualification to be usable? You'll say people, you hear people say maybe, well, they didn't keep themselves usable. Well, even if you messed up, you're still usable. It just matters if you're surrendered to God at that moment. Have you surrendered to God? Are you surrendered to God right now? You say, well, Micah, I messed up. That doesn't matter. That doesn't take away your usability. That just means just... Get right with God and just keep serving him and you're useful again. There you go. Yeah. It's an everyday thing. But he says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So why should we be usable? He says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, we're called, the calling of God to be usable, the consecration of God. We are the brethren. We are the church. God set us apart. And his compassion, brethren, by the mercies of God. We can be usable because of his mercy. None of us are perfect. None of us can be used by him. But because he's merciful to us, we can present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. Right. If you want to be usable by God, it doesn't matter what you have done, haven't done. It's, well, you've got to be saved. That's the most important part. You've got to be saved. But after that, every day you've got to lay down your life a living sacrifice for whatever God has in store for today. Some days it's going to be easier than others. Some days we say and we think, God, I don't know why you want to use me. There's no way I can do this. But we present our bodies a living sacrifice, seeing what God wants us to do. We need to be surrendered to God. Romans 6, 13 says, Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Romans 6, 16 says, Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness, are we obeying sin to death or are we obeying righteousness, obedience unto righteousness? Verse 19 of that chapter says, I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh, for as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members servants unto righteousness, unto holiness. Just like before we were saved, we were members serving unrighteousness. Now that you're saved, serve righteousness. <laughs> Read the Bible, see what God wants you to do. Serve, be righteous unto holiness. First Corinthians 6, 20 says, For ye are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God. So those of us that are saved, we have been bought with a price. God, Christ God. gave his life for us. When we believe on him, he bought us. Our paid, sin debt is paid. We are his servants, so serve him in our body and without, in our body and our spirit, in our actions and in our attitude. Everything we do, serve God. He says, present your body as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto your God, unto God, which is your reasonable service. He died for us. Everything he asked us to do is reasonable. That's right. It's all fair game because he, his son gave his life for us. But we see we need to be transformed to be like Christ. He says, and be not conformed to this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We need to be surrendered to God. We need to be transformed by God. See, though, once we're saved, if we start serving God right away, that's what we need to do. But God starts working on us. He starts changing us. He changes our heart. He changes our mind. He changes everything in us so that we can serve him. 
Ephesians 4, 17 to 24 says, This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. Don't walk in the vanity of your mind. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart. Don't walk in vain things. Don't walk alienated, separated from God. He says, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, to put off the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Colossians 3 says, Lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. When there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Once you're saved, we're part of the brethren. Every one of us have the same goal, to serve God and be holy. That's our goal. Amen. It says there's no Greek nor Jews. There's not circumcision or unsaved or circumcision. We're all the same. Someone said the ground is level at the foot of the cross. Amen. We're all the same. But then in verse 3, we see, For I say through the grace given unto me, For I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, each and every one of us, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. I was looking this week studying Saul and David. Honestly, if you look morally, I mean, Saul did some stupid stuff, don't get me wrong. But Saul was a bit more of a moral man than even David was. But Saul was prideful and destroyed him. If you look at Saul's life, David did a lot of horrible, horrible, horrible things. Saul did too, but I'd say David was way worse of a dude than Saul was. But... David was repentant. He had a heart after God. He was right. willing to humble himself to be used by God. Saul was prideful. Samuel had to come into Saul. He says, why haven't you done everything God told you to do? He says, you know, when you were small in your own sight, God magnified you. He glorified you. He used you then. He says, but now that you're too big to be used by God, he says, the kingdom is done. It's no longer your kingdom. The next chapter, David is anointed as king. But we see being humble. He says, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, seriously, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Each of us have that measure of faith. Whatever God's given to us, serve him with that. Amen. If we go on, we see, be surrendered, be transformed, be humble. But he says in verse 4, For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. We see that usability of the brethren, but also the unity of the brethren. Amen. Now, each and every one of you can do something different than I can do. When I come in in the week, people are in and out of here doing different stuff all the time. Right. Some of you take care of the tractors, take care of the lawn. If I was going to get on the mower and take care of the lawn, I would get that job done. Those lines would not be straight. They would look horrible. <laughs> if I was working on the tractors up there, it'd blow up, okay? I could learn that stuff, but that's not me. That's not my strong suit. If I need to, I'll learn it. That sounds great, but that's not what I'm naturally good at. So it's working on the tractors and on the front yard. Is that any less important than preaching? No. It's just you guys are doing that, taking care of those things, so I can study and take care of this. Now, if right. that needs done, I, I'm willing to do it. We help each other out whenever we can. But as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, we don't all have the same job. Right? You visit some of the shut-ins. They may not be out door knocking. They may not be able to make it in here. But you walk in a couple of the shut-ins' houses, they'll ask you, who's this on the prayer list? Who's this? How's this person? How's this person? They're praying like crazy. Right. Some of us with our jobs and stuff, I'm not saying if you have a job, don't pray. Don't take that wrong. Don't, don't take that that way. But if we have a job, we have different things that we're doing throughout the day, and we don't have all day to pray. But these people that don't have anything to do because of their health, they can sit there and they can pray for the prayers. Right. They can pray for each of us here. They, they're praying. They're doing something different than we are. Different members of different jobs. He says, so we being many are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. Now, I may be doing different things than Pastor Maple, than Austin, than Mark, than Steve, than Tim, than Judy, than each of you. We're doing different things. But when we line up with what God wants us to do and say, God, what do you want us to do today? God can get the job done if we go back to verse 1 and each and every one of us are surrendered. Right. Each and every one of us are holy. Each and every one of us are transformed. We're humble. If we're each living for God, 
God can give us an office. He can give us something to do, a job to do. And we can get it done as the family of God. So we can't look at one another and say, oh, I'm doing more than this person. I'm doing more than this person. No, I found out people that you may not think are doing anything, they're actually doing a ton. That's right. I remember Jason said when he came on staff, if that's the word you want to use, when Jason started, he said, I was mind blown by how much goes on here behind the scenes. It's true. There is so much behind the scenes stuff that you can't even imagine. Right. There's some people that maybe aren't doing as much as they would, but they're having so many problems in their life right now. They're taking care of others in the church, outside of the church. We may not see that. But God is using each and every one of us. We, if we let him, it may not be seen, but God sees it. Amen. We have different offices, but we can't say one part of the body of Christ is less important than the other. Right? I know, I think Austin told me one time he broke, when you were swimming, you broke one of your toes, right? Just one toe, and you said it messed everything up. He said he just broke one toe. He said literally swimming, swim meets everything, were horrible. Just one tiny toe broken, messed everything up. When one of us is gone, one of us isn't doing what we need to do, one of us passes away and leaves a hole. And there's right. something that one, someone needs to step up. God, God will fill that. We, we know he will. But if each and every, this is a good phrase I heard, if each and every church member was just like me, what kind of a church would Bible Baptist church be? Right. So now, that doesn't mean if everyone's doing exactly what you're doing, but if each of us, if everyone was as faithful as you were, if everyone was as faithful as I would, as I am, what kind of a church would our church be? Am I giving my best? Are we giving our best? Would our church be giving our best if we were each like, just like me, just like you? How would God use us? We each need to give our best so God can, as a whole, use us as his body, the body of Christ. Amen. Now, I like this part of the next part, verse 6, as having their gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the portion of faith, or ministry, let us wait on our ministry, or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorteth on exhortation, he that giveth, let him doeth with simplicity, he that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. We each have a spiritual gift, we each have a different strength God gives us. Now just because you're good at one doesn't mean you need to forsake all the others. Right. But God's going to give us something that, not naturally, but supernaturally through the Spirit, God gives us an ability to do something that comes more naturally. We enjoy it more than the others. Whether it's prophecy, speaking the truth, thus saith the Lord, just everything we see black and white, what the Lord says, or whether it's ministry, serving others, just one who can just step up and serve. When something he's done, they're right there, yeah, bam, yeah. they may not see him, they're serving. Whether it's teaching, one that can take the Bible and lay it out, teach it and explain it away, something that takes the big truth, and God uses them to explain it in a simple way, something we can understand. Amen. He that exhorteth, encourageth, call it action. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. You know, there's some people we not, may not see do anything. I found out someone that was here years ago and has passed away. And the more I thought about it growing up, the more I thought this person didn't do anything. I found out they were a giver. They were a crazy giver. You can't see that. If they're doing it right, you're not going to see how they're giving. He says, do right. it with simplicity. But some people can give. God has just given them an ability. He's given them the means just to give like crazy. Amen. He that ruleth administration, able to keep things organized. Trust me, not mine, okay? If you walk in my office, you walk to my car, not organized, okay? okay? You know that. Or he that showeth mercy just with cheerfulness, mercy just caring for others. Each of us have different strengths that God has given us. He's given us each an ability, a gift that we can use. And if each of us are working together, not saying, I'm doing more than this person, I'm doing more than this, they're doing more than me, I can't do what they can do, why can't I do what they can do? If we just wake up in the morning, be humble, surrender ourselves to God, Ask him to keep transforming us and just do whatever he has us to do that day. God's going to line it up to where the body of Christ is working efficiently. It's right. working, he can get things done. And what is the goal of that? Man, I skipped some stuff because I was running out of time and I'm no longer running out of time. We're going to get out just as early as we always do. <laughs> I thought I was doing good skipping stuff. Oh, well, anyways. So we're surrendered to God. We're usable. We're you, the unity of the brethren, not just whatever the uniqueness of the brethren. We each have a different job, a different strength. We need you. If you're here and you're not doing something and you want to do something, be praying about it. God, what would you have us to do? We need you. You say, I can't do anything. Yes, you can. Amen. Even if it's praying, whatever it is, God can use you and we need you. Okay? But the uniqueness of the brethren, but then what is the undertaking of the brethren? In verse 9 on, we see, let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love, and honor preferring one in honor preferring one another. Not slothful of business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. 
distributing to the necessity of the saints, giving to hospitality, bless them which persecute you and curse not. He says, rejoice with them that you rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. He says, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in doing so, thou shalt keep coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. We're not going to go through each and every one of these. Amen. It, it, it would not take us all day, you know, I, I could get through it in five minutes, but we're not going to look at each and every one of these. But if we look through each and every one of these, what is the undertaking, the goal of what God has given us to do? The undertaking, he says in Matthew 5, 14, ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot, in, that's set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Amen. What is the undertaking of the brethren? What is, why did God, why does he want us to be surrendered, humble, usable? Why does he want us to be this? Why did he give us all different gifts? Why are we supposed to work together? So that we can be the light of the world and that men can see our good works and glorify our Father, which is in heaven. Amen. Now, God gave us each gifts to take care of the church, the body of Christ. He gives us these gifts to take care of each other, but also so that when we go out, People can say, oh man, Bible Baptist, Lane, Bible Baptist Church in Lancaster, when you meet those people, those are the people you want to be around. The light of the world. They're genuine right. Christians. You know, if someone says you're a genuine Christian, that's the best compliment you can ever get. Amen. I had someone tell, they told the dean of the college this. He went to Lowe's and he said, man, this kid lives what he believes. It's terrifying. <laughs> but they told him that and he said, thanks. But if we just live what we believe and each and every one of us do what God has us to do, we're each unique. But if we're all working unified, using whatever God has given us, what I have is not less than you have. What you have is not less than what I have. We're right. each equally important in God. But if we surrender ourselves and let him use us each and every day, be transformed and let him use us, be humble and let him use us, then working together as a whole, even if we don't see what you do, if you don't see what we do, God can use the body of Christ to take care of each other. And when we go right. out in Lancaster, we can be the light of the world in this town, in Fairfield County, in Junction City, Pickaway County, everywhere you go. God can take care of each of these places by us being the light of the world. And people can see our church working together. It's not just me, it's not just you, but as a body of Christ working together, they can see our light and glorify the Father which is in heaven. Right. Maybe if we all work together, we all do it. Whatever God gives us to do, do it to the best of our ability. Maybe we can see someone saved. Maybe someone would come that needs help. They could be comforted. They could get saved. Someone that's back so we could come back, follow God closer. Amen. If we just each individually do whatever God has us to do every single day. Be surrendered to him. Be humble. Be transformed by him every day. Ask God to help us be more conformed to his image every day. And then if we put aside our differences and work together as the body of Christ, then God can use us to undertake whatever he has us to do. We can go reach the people around us and take care of one another. Amen. So... Whatever the need is tonight, if there's something God wants you to do and you haven't been doing, just surrender to him. Amen. If you think you can't do anything, realize Psalm 139 says, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You're just as important as anyone else. Jesus Christ died for you. And you are so unique to God. You're so perfect. Not perfect. Well, not perfect. But you're so special to God. He made you perfectly for his will. That if we just let him use us, each and every one of us are important to God. We can each be used to do his will in the area surrounding us. Amen. So as our heads are bowed and eyes are closed, realize you are important as we stand. You are important, and God wants you to serve. Our church needs you. Yeah. You say, maybe I'm not a member. If God's working on your heart about that, then keep praying about it. If you haven't been baptized, be baptized. If you're not saved, get saved tonight. And as growing the family of God together, growing closer to each other, growing closer to God, God can do wonderful things with our church as a whole. Each of us individually in our church as a whole.